Welcome back everybody, my name is Jim and this is The Lake Effect Gardener. just gotten back from vacation. I spent a week not too far from here. Usually, if you guys follow this channel, you know that I usually go up to Lake Ontario on the very, very top of New York State on the Canadian border up in Watertown for a week. We did not do that this year. We actually traveled about 15 to 20 minutes south of my house um, at Sunset Bay. You know, I've taken pictures there before. Um, if you if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that and it's a cute little beach village and we got a little cottage there and it was lovely the weather was absolutely extraordinary um, upon coming back there we had a little bit of a party for a certain reason <laughs> um, I just had a lot of friends here and um, I, I'm sounding a little bit hoarse right now because the party was it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of singing to be had. So <clears throat> I apologize if my voice isn't 100%. Um, I'll do my best to speak as clearly as possible. I had full on laryngitis yesterday, so I'm happy to see that my voice is making a comeback, but never mind. I'm back, I'm in the garden, I got everything cleaned up, and it's time for a July tour, and there's also going to be a harvest to be had. The very first for this channel, I'm going to be uh, getting my garlic up. It seems a little late for that, but um, it's been okay. It's been starting to turn yellow and it's starting to look like it needs to be pulled up. So, I mean, we'll see how that goes. Like I said, never grown garlic before, but I'm cautiously optimistic. It would be lovely to get a nice crop of that, honest to goodness. So without further ado, let's head out into the garden. I'm gonna give you the tour first, see what happens with the garlic bed. And then um, we'll have just a quick little chat on the flip side. Let's head towards the garden now. Everything is really grown in. It's gorgeous, full, lush. Purple loose strife is just, I mean, look at these gorgeous little purple flowers. Just beautiful. Japanese beetles are loving it too. They're all sorts of love right now. Eek. <laughs> the Grandpa Ott is climbing its way up the trellis, looking gorgeous. So you can see a lot has, has grown in quite a bit. <clears throat> this is my only problem area in the garden, I feel. Uh, there was a breach in the chicken wire and I don't know what it is. I think it might be that wood chuck, but it did, it did take down um, a few of my brassicas in here my sprouts which you know were looking really really lovely until that happened but you know so is life <clears throat> over here in this bed <clears throat> excuse me the garlic is ready to come up and that's what we're going to do a little bit later all of my uh squash that's growing up right now is doing fabulously i am starting to get some fruit here's that lovely little delicata that's starting to come in and I believe I've got a little Burgess Buttercup action going on. I don't quite see anything in the way of, oh, I see. Oh, I'll have to show it to you. Right over there, I'm seeing a couple of, of some, uh, yeah, that, that plant, huh, it starts with an H. I'll come back in a second. <clears throat> All my cucumbers, are doing fabulous. Remember, this is the Dasher F1. Uh, I've got to get in here to pick some. And this one's starting to grow in the fence. Not good, but that'll be a tasty little snack. The squash is looking beautiful. And growing prolifically, I have been harvesting quite a bit. Dear God in heaven, that needs to come up. Oh my gosh, this is like overnight. 
good gravy. Oh, here's another one. This is some of the yellow squash. Oh, fabulous. I'm gonna do some cooking, some grilling. That would be lovely. Onions are looking really good. I did plant some basil along the side here. Looking very, very happy. These onions are looking, this is, I think this is going to be, look at this. I should probably start spooning these a little bit. Um, the onions are starting to get really, really big. I'm thrilled to bits because you know I do not have good luck with onions. I think I might actually have a decent onion crop this year. And I want to say the sets didn't do very well, but the seedlings did. So, hmm, note to self, I'm not going to do sets if I, if I can possibly manage to just do seedlings every year, plant my own seeds. I had no idea that they would actually catch up and maybe even surpass the sets. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Isn't this beautiful? I just, it's such a lovely focal point. It's one of the, one of the happiest places in my garden. I feel what makes it even happier for me is that I didn't have to plant it at all. I planted it once and that was it. The toms are doing great. Look how dark green the foliage is. They are so happy this year. They are looking very, very cheerful, and I'm getting, I mean, look at these. Just packed, packed with fruit. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I do have to get in here and, and, and maybe thin a little bit of this out, get a little bit more air circulation, but yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have another bumper crop this year, fingers crossed, if nothing terrible happens. My pickling cucumbers, I have to get in here because I do have some that are beyond. Yeah, I gotta get these picked. These are too big. Um, I'll probably end up eating those instead of eating them raw as opposed to pickling them. Brassicas are doing really, really well. I've got a collie in here that's ready to go. I need to pick that. Again, this is my first year of actually successfully growing cauliflower, so I'm really excited about that. I don't know if you can see it. It looks beautiful. They have all formed gorgeous curds. I cannot wait to get into there and then get those harvested. I've got, look at this, this broccoli. Oh my goodness. The netting has really been the game changer. I said that in my last video, but I sincerely, sincerely mean that. Um, here's my grass bed. It's growing the best out of everything. This was supposed to be sweet corn, if you so remember, but alas, it never happened. I'll be digging all of this out in due time, and I'm gonna be planting in probably some bush beans just because um, the corn was a no-go. Oh well. Um, I've got my chilies that are starting over here to put on some fruit. I know there is, I've seen some, here they are. Looking very, very happy indeed. Not as big as a crop, obviously, as last year, but that's okay. I still have plenty from last year um, to, to enjoy. <clears throat> My sweet pepper bed is looking wonderful. These are the yellow banana, and they are just really starting to throw some gorgeous, gorgeous peppers. I love that shape. So those are the yellow uh, sweet banana peppers. There are some of those corno de toro, okay? If you remember um, the horn of the bull. There's just, there's so many. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. That's gonna be one of those, gorgeous. And then all of the box standard bell peppers that I have, starting to throw some fruit. If I can find some, I can't at the moment. <clears throat> Yes, gorgeous. So we'll get some soon. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Here we are, cute little dumplings right there. Um, I think my potatoes pretty much rotted into the ground. I haven't gotten any potatoes at all. This is very, very, I mean, I've got two, but I planted so many and I just, ugh, very, very sad. I did plant in some more cow peas, okay, over here. I started those in cells and um, they popped up really nicely and I transplanted them not too long ago. And then I've got one, two, three, four of the Coco Noir. Uh, I tried it again and 
they <laughs> four out of the I don't know how many I sewed were um, they ended up germinating so I threw them in here so at least if anything I'll be able to replenish my seed supply we'll see these peas are ready to go I need to get back here and start harvesting okay remember this uh, variety is called progress so um, yeah, they're, they're pretty much ready and I gotta get them out only because I've gotta think about my fall planting of peas. But I mean, these plants are just dripping with them, dripping. My navy and my cannellini beans are now setting flower. So remember I've got two rows of each and those are looking really, really nice. I did get a better look at the honey crisp and I'm starting to get a little blushing on the skin so they're really kind of happy right now and I'm I'm hope hopeful and optimistic look at all of these um, I don't know if they're gonna get any bigger than that I think they might you know because of the bark issues down here let me just show you once again um, that you know they may not grow to full maturity I'm not sure brassicas the greens are doing really well as kale looks gorgeous I'm Got to have to start harvesting some of this stuff. So all my lettuce went to, um, they started bolting, of course. Um, we had a really long and hot week while I was away, so it makes, you know, complete sense. The beets are doing really well. They're starting to really bulb up nicely. So I'm going to get some of these out, let the other ones breathe and grow a little bit more, and I'm going to start sowing some more so that I can have a nice fall crop as well. Swiss chard. Look at this color. Oh my goodness, so pretty, so pretty. That is the sight of summer right there. Eggplant is looking very lacy. Um, I did do a treatment of neem oil and uh, I'm not seeing any of those bugs, those weird, the, I don't even know what they are. Um, like a leaf beetle type of, of thing. They're, they're, I don't see any, which is good. And maybe it'll give these plants a chance to start. I mean, they're starting to flower. They're starting to throw buds. So that's a good sign. Coco Sandy, as I've been calling them, the Coco Sophie that my friend Sandy sent to me, starting to produce some flowers. Very pleased about that. These seeds did remarkably well. It's been a bad bean year for me. And the fact that these are doing as well as they are really, really makes me happy. The Kentucky Wonder along the back has not thrown any flowers yet, but I think it's, I think it's fixing too. So <laughs> one can only hope, one can only hope. Squash bed is getting really quite big. Um, and I'm starting to see some fruit appear. For example, some spaghetti squash looking lovely, starting to get all big and excited. Um, I'm not getting anything off the pumpkins just yet. Uh, cautiously optimistic. I thought I saw one from the Connecticut field over here, but I'm not seeing it now. Um, but we'll just keep our eyes on that. Now something is indeed getting into this bed. I've got to figure out how it's accessing it because I'm noticing a lot of nibbles that are happening to the leaves. I'll show you as I wake my right around here. I did re-sow some of these canes. So along the back, this whole area here did not have any beans growing. So um, I did re-sow in the hopes that they will catch up. But everything else seems to be doing pretty well. This is the um, Blue Lake bush, or the Blue Lake, yeah, pole bean that I grow every year. And um, it is looking lovely and it is throwing flowers. Or this might be a Gigantes, I'm not sure. None of the Gigantes actually came up, so, huh, you know, we'll see. I did re sow this as Kentucky Wonder pole beans just because I had such bad luck with the Gigantes. So, and <clears throat> they're starting to pop up. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if they're going to have enough time to grow, but I, it's better than not doing it at all. Now, now, which one do we got here? Let me, let me just trail back here. This is a, oh, a sugar pumpkin. Okay, very cool. Do you guys see that sugar pumpkin right about? Well, everything blends in together. I think it's there. 
I, I hesitate to get really into the, you see it? It's that round thing. Okay, it's very green. So, yay, um, I might be able to get a half a pie out of that <laughs> for the time being. <laughs> Uh, I realize it's early still. It's early. And then I've got some acorn squash that's on the, uh, the grow there. Very happy about that. But something is coming in here and nibbling. Perhaps my fencing is not high enough. Perhaps the bunnies can actually jump over this. But still early. I have to keep in mind this is still early July. No, it's mid-July now, so, you know, I still have another two months of growth to expect on my winter squash. So, and now that these runners are being sent out, they can, um, you know, I don't know if you know this, you probably do, so this is a moot point, but everywhere there's a leaf node, okay, on the vine that trails, it will send down roots. So, the plant itself does not have to be reliant on where it was actually planted, okay, the very base of it, but it will send down um, roots at each leaf node and it will begin to feed from there as well. So this is brand new topsoil, um, brand new compost, very nutrient dense, so I'm, I'm pleased that they're going to start taking nutrients from the actual bed itself. And that was the that was the goal. It was never for me to just, you know, only feed the bag and then hope and pray that it's, you know, there was gonna be enough nutrition in there. Not at all. I, I knew that this was going to happen and um, giving it a really good run back and forth. It's gonna be fun when this is all grown in, if it hopefully grows in, and um, just kind of make my way through all of them and see exactly what we've got in the way of winter squash. Let's go over to the tunnel. Let's see how things are going in melon land here. I did have some casualties, I'm not gonna lie. Um, all right, that mystery squash is starting to take off. Um, and the Minnesota midget, here's the Minnesota midget, is starting to throw tendrils. Um, but it's not tall enough to grab onto there, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing for now. I am, <clears throat> enjoying the fact that my sugar baby melons are growing at an excitable rate and they are indeed starting to show signs of life. Fabulous. Here's another one. They're tiny but I still have a lot of time so I'm not concerned about that. I, like I said I did have a few casualties over here. The hail's best. I had two plants over here. Um, I'm not sure if they dampened off or if they were nibbled which is a possibility the little critters can get in here. I do have evidence of some digging happening in here. But other than that, I mean, the hail's best. These four, or these three, are doing well and they look really strong. My leftover brassicas that I had are also looking really good. Um, remember, these were planted much later than everything else. So my red cabbage, my green cabbage, and a few collies right here. Um, and then I've got some Swiss chard, and this is the rainbow variety. And it has it has been nibbled, but um, they never got into the center, so those will still grow and produce. So things are going well. I still have to get this other side taken care of um, so that I, I can get my late season tomatoes in. They've officially rooted and they're looking rather happy, so that way I can um, get those prepared those beds prepared and I can get those tomatoes in the ground for hopefully a late crop. But overall things are looking good. I'm, I'm pleased. Um, I did have a lot of cleanup that I had to do when I got back from vacation, but it wasn't terrible. I had mulched heavily before I left and uh, if anything it was just looking very sad because we had a week of drought. So, oh my goodness gracious. I gotta get harvesting some of these so I can actually get some pickle-sized cucumbers. All right, let's harvest some of this garlic now. It's a bit of a tight squeeze in here. I did put my microphone on though, so hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. Um, the thing about garlic for me is that I have never grown it. <laughs> 
so I'm not completely sure what to expect. Now looking at the onions, as we did at the tour, I, you can see the actual bulb getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Whereas this, this is a this is a hard neck variety, okay, that I got from you know uh, organic grower, not too far from here at a shop. <clears throat> I don't know what to expect because I can't see what's going on beneath the soil. So this could be wonderful or completely tragic, but let's see what we got. I've got Tori, my Hori Hori with me, and I'm just going <laughs> to I'm starting to put I'm starting to put Tori in the ground about 6 inches away from the stem. I think that might be uh, a little overzealous, but we'll see. I don't want to go too close because I don't want to damage the bulb. Oy. All right, here we go. <gasps> oh! All right. Wow! Not too shabby. Huh. Oh, this is like potatoes. I have to do another one now. Let's see. Oof. Ooh. Okay, so they're pretty uniform so far in size. Um, and let's see. No sign of damage. Looking beautiful. This is, I think this is about the size of the bulbs when I purchased them. Oh my goodness. How exciting. All right, let me see if I can get this one next to me here. Oy. All right. Wow. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> I have really big hands. So you can see here, can you see? That is beauteous. Oh boy, this is gonna become a very addictive thing for me. I'll do a couple more. Garlic harvest, very first, very first lake effect garden garlic harvest. One more. Hey. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, it smells amazing. Check that baby out. All right, I'm going to get the rest of these up and show you what I got. So I've gotten them all out. Uh, I'm going to weed up the space because this is going to be for rutabaga and kohlrabi. Not kohlrabi. Bok choy. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. So, um, by the way, that butternut squash. Butternut squash. That's what I couldn't remember. I kept thinking honeydew. And I was like, no. No, that's not right. So anyways, I'm going to get this cleaned up. This is what we got. 30 gorgeous bulbs of garlic. I'm gonna get these cleaned off and they need to cure. So I need to kind of rig something for that. I do wanna hang them upside down. It's always a good idea. Uh, you want the moisture to run away from the bulb as opposed to towards the bulb. And they will cure faster. And then I can chop all the stems off and store them. How exciting is that? My first garlic harvest ever. I cannot be more pleased. I will always, always grow garlic in this garden. This could be, this just could be the year for alliums, which would be a first. So um, it won't be long before the onions are brought up and we can take a look at those. So, yay! So excited. Well, I am just, I'm thrilled to bits. It's a really, really good feeling, especially with something that you haven't grown before to have such a success story to tell. 
with that garlic. I'm really, really excited. So that's actually, you know, a very happy spot. I did give it a good close inspection. Everything looks wonderful. I just need to clean it up now and get it to cure a bit. So that's what I'm gonna do after I hang up with you guys. But yeah, so things are moving along. I'm starting to harvest some stuff here and there. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased everything has kind of caught up with itself. I have caught up with it. <laughs> so um, moving forward, I don't really have any big projects on, on the books. Um, I will be doing a laundry video with my 1953 Maytag. I did have quite a number of people who are interested in that, so I will definitely do that. And that's wonderful because that's really, it's killing two birds with one stone. Washing in one of those is a slow process, so it's not something that I, I have to worry about, you know, spending too much time filming. It's just, you know, it's naturally a slow process. So I'll be more than happy to show you guys what I did. And um, along with that, um, I'll be doing some more tours and, I don't know, a couple other things that might be popping up here and there. I definitely have to do a huge clean out of my garage because I'm going to be ordering some more firewood for this winter. Ugh, I can't believe I'm talking about winter. Disgusting. But I'm going to enjoy the July weather as much as possible. I hope you uh, friends, viewers over in the UK um, are doing okay with the extreme heat that you're having over there. It's going to be 88 degrees here today. So, uh, we're, although not completely used to it, um, it's not something out of the ordinary. Humidity levels are a little bit high, but you know that's par for the course when you live five, you know, five miles, not even a mile from a very large um, source of fresh water. So, mm. so thanks so much again for tuning in, everybody. I hope you're all doing well, and I will see you all really, really soon. So long.